People think that art is a talent, one that you're born with. But the truth is, it's just a learned skill. It's something you hone and develop over hours and hours of practice, just like anything else. We're all born as artists. We all have these creative skills. But the trouble comes with time, when we forget or don't use these skills on a regular basis. And this neglect becomes more consistent as we grow older with family life, school, and all the other aspects coming into play. And that artistic and creative nature slowly withers. This is why I chose to base my talk around creativity, because this happened to me. As a toddler, I had enough energy to run the sun. Like, you couldn't keep me still for more than a few seconds. And I would go surf every day, go on the beach, play with my dad, harass my big sis, like build polar forts around the house, draw, read, you know, all the kid stuff. But when all those things couldn't satisfy my need for entertainment or fun, I could simply just sit on the floor and dive into my own mind. I mean, my imagination was so deep, I could spend hours flying through my thoughts, building imaginary worlds or replaying movies to pass time. But as I grew older, I slowly became more and more distant with this world, to the point where I couldn't stand still or accept that boredom for more than 10 seconds. That became my new limit. I couldn't escape back into that world like I used to. And instead, it was replaced by this nagging urge to just be stimulated, see what's in front of you. And that drove me to check my phone, see what new things have popped in the last, seconds I've, la the last 10 seconds I've left it. My project has been to rediscover this creative drive, to push away from my screens and get back in touch with my artistic side. So for the past two school years, I've been practicing blacksmithing and metalwork, things I've always had a keen interest in but never devoted any time to. And I saw this as my chance to devote my time to my true passions instead of letting it drain away. And it's been a struggle. I've gone back and forth between the two throughout this, throughout this process, and I still do. Times where everything comes together and flows through, and others where the frustration beats me back down, back into the old habits. And I always go back to the easy escapes, because that that's all it is for me in the end, an escape. An escape from the boredom and all the other problems. And as a kid, my imagination was that escape. But as I grew older, the phone just became faster. But it's not just to escape boredom. With the world we live in today, with climate change, global warming, and the collapse of society, you know, all the fun things we learn at the school, <laughs> a lot of us need a break and a breath of relief from it all. And we just search for whatever hobbies or habits will give us that relief. And many of us turn to our screens for that, because it's, it's quick. It's instant, and it's right there. And uh, it doesn't ask you for anything. But it only creates another problem, one of addiction. I mean, a study done by Microsoft, one of the biggest tech companies of the world, showed that in 2000, the average attention span of teens and adults was about 12 seconds. Then, another study done in 2012, it dropped to eight seconds. Now, the average attention span of your goldfish, nine seconds. <laughs> I mean, Apple, they've made screen tracking apps so their users can monitor how much screen time they use per day. So even Steve Jobs and Bill Gates, they monitor their own children's screen time because they know about the risks and the dangers that they can have on a developing child. And I can't even count the number of times where I've been inspired to do something, to create or draw and the biggest roadblock to even start is like a four-inch glass screen. I can easily just spend three hours of my day draining onto YouTube or social media platforms. But each time I choose those over my true passions, I feel disappointed and saddened in myself. And I'm lucky enough to have found my alternative and to have found my true passions. And that's largely thanks to my family and where I went to school. Some don't even get that chance. But before this age of tech, people didn't have the distraction of the phone or the internet. There was more personal interaction with one another. One another. 
whether that would be with kids in the playground or others in the neighborhood. You just find things to do. See what you can come up with. Make up games to play. Play a game of catch or take a walk. We, on the other hand, have the very easy and convenient solution of just popping up on our phones. Instagram, Facebook, Netflix, YouTube. Just choose from the thousands and thousands of apps on the internet, right there and then. People in the past would have found ways out of this potential boredom to drive it back. And this is where all the crazy and fun ideas are born, all those fun stories you tell them later in life. And this is where creativity is used at its best. And we've removed, we've removed most of those moments from our lives and out of our own impatience. So what drives this impatience and addiction to our screens? I'm sure many of you already know this from the previous presentation and all the screenings we've seen here at the Green School, but I'll say it for those that may not know. But what drives this addiction to our screens is the same thing that drives gamblers or drinkers and drug users. It's your reward center or pleasure center in your brain. It's what gives you that wholesome feeling of satisfaction when you do something enjoyable. And so I like surfing or drawing. Others may like reading or playing video games. But regardless of the activity, whenever you do these enjoyable things, you get this nice feeling inside of you. And that comes from a neurotransmitter chemical called dopamine. And some will give you more than others depending on how much you'd like them. So this would be your baseline. Average day, nothing special. Wait, too far, too far. This would be having a great meal at dinner, like home cooked, really nice. <laughs> that would be having a good chat with your buddies and telling jokes at the table. Crack cocaine. <laughs> so, they give you a different amount depending on how much you like them. I mean, I've seen stats from theconversation.com by a Christopher J. Ferguson. He's a professor of psychology at the University of Stetson. And he showed that technology can give you a 50 to 100% boost of dopamine than your regular baseline. Meth or cocaine can give you anything from 350 to 1,200% more. Now these by themselves are perfectly normal numbers. They're, they don't matter that much. The problem comes when you abuse it, when you do it over and over and over again, and your brain becomes overstimulated and oversaturated with this dopamine. It becomes used to it, becomes used to that feeling. And so once you take them away, all those smaller things that used to give you that same feeling can no longer satisfy you, and you go back to the only thing that can, and that's the descent into addiction. It may seem like just... <laughs> It's a bad comparison to using your phone to using crack cocaine, but the problem is real. Because unlike crack cocaine, like mean, crack cocaine, you can't buy it on any given street and you can't use it wherever you want. Like, there, there are issues with that. <laughs> <laughs> but technology or your phones, you whip that out any given moment of any given day, and no one will blink twice. And you have it on you every single moment. It's the first thing you check, and it's probably the last thing you check before you go to bed. And we give these things to five-year-old children. I mean, my own brother has one, and it's like a little bit worrying. <laughs> but we don't do much about it. And that's the real danger of it, because of its availability, because we can just look at it over and over again, get that next dose. And that's the danger of tech. It may seem I'm just trash-talking it now and saying it's all evil, but the opposite is true, because tech is an amazing thing. I mean, the internet is the accumulated knowledge of millions. Psychologists, professors, artists, creators, all stored into that one tiny screen. And you can access it any day, at any moment. And it's whatever you want to learn, right there at your fingertips, at no cost value at all, except for buying the phone, of course. <laughs> but. Yeah, it's a very useful tool. I mean, my skills in drawing would never have reached where they are now if I didn't have my phone. If I had trouble drawing a character, I could just pop onto YouTube, search up anatomy, and then right there, I learned it, done. But it's a slippery slope that you can easily fall down on. Because one moment I could be learning how to draw landscapes, and then two hours later I'll be on top 10 Rick and Morty conspiracies. <laughs> 
just, it just drags you down into a black hole of randomness. Like, it's hard to escape, especially with YouTube's new algorithm. It's damn good. <laughs> but so much of my time has been wasted this way. I mean, I, could, I look back and on all that wasted time, all those hours on YouTube, and with the responsibilities of being an adult start weighing me down more and more with each new year, I look back on those times, on those missed, on those missed chances and opportunities to practice new passions or, sorry, practice old passions and find new ones. And whenever I look back, I kind of feel a bit of regret because I know I could have spent that time better. Because time is one of, if not the most valuable resource that we have. We view it as some limitless thing, yet we only have so much of it. And unlike most things, once you use it, you can never take it back. And it's very fickle. It's easy to slip through your fingers, especially when you're having fun or enjoying yourself on YouTube. I mean, when I'm in the zone of drawing or making art, I get lost in that. I, I know the time flies by, but I'm aware of it around me, and I accept it. I let it wash past. In that zone, I feel more sure of myself, more confident. I feel less anxious and stressed of everything else. And it brings me that happiness that I so desperately want. And I see what I can achieve in these moments, and it drives me to achieve more, to accomplish one goal and go for the next one and again and again and again, sending me on a winning streak. And then I get frustrated, or I fail, or what I envision doesn't match my, what I've created. And that's when I go back to the bad habits. But I keep having to remind myself each time I fall back down that I know better, I know what's good for me, and I know what's not. Because I know that art will give me the happiness that I so desire, but it also decreased my stress. And it's given me something that I can be proud of, to be confident in. And unlike art, the screens can't achieve that. When they send you into that trance, after it's done, you feel underachieved, a bit empty. Like, what have you done? You just stared at the screen for two hours. But art has given me a way to let my emotions flow freely and let them flow out in a healthy manner. And my, my, when my focus is like that of a static TV, it helps me center it back to the point of a pen or ground myself back into the present of life. But we need more creativity in this world because it, be it should be given the same importance as math or science, yet it never is, except for this school, exception. And it's one of the driving forces in our evolution as people in, and our society. I mean, imagine if our ancestors didn't have that creativity. None of this would have been possible. So why isn't it given the same importance? So don't shun your own creativity. Don't waste your hours on YouTube like I do. It's a gift that you should be using to the fullest. And it's something that's defining in our humanity. So push yourself, test new waters, find new passions. Check, those, check where those hours go if you say you don't have time, because you know that you do, and you know that you have the potential. So just see where it goes. Just start living in the world more instead of simply observing it.